Previously, we have looked at how you can use radiant flux intensity, which is what you observe, the light coming to you at Earth, uh, to find the distance to a certain star. Now, when we think about distance, actually, it's a bit hard because if you look at the sky, there's many, many different brightness of a star, like what we looked at in a previous theory video. So people come up with this idea of a standard candle, something with a standard brightness. So let's write down the, 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 the definition first of what is a standard candle. Okay, it's not a candle, like a literal candle. It's a class of stellar objects, like, you know, stars, for example, which has a known luminosity. So we have different ways of choosing or determining the luminosity of these standard candles pretty reliably. Okay, and of course, the distance can be determined by measuring the radiant flux intensity. So radiant flux intensity. These are like our calibrated um, brightness in the sky, which we use to be our reference point for other things. Okay, so one example of a standard candle, I guess the first one example, is what we call a CIFID variable, also known as a twinkle twinkle little star. Then we call, oh, the star is blinking. Why? Ah? Okay, never mind. So why is a CIFID variable? Uh, basically, it's a star whose radius varies periodically. Periodically. And this causes the temperature of the star to change. We will learn a bit more about why that is so. So the temperature of the star to change so that its luminosity also will vary periodically. Now, what does that mean? Okay, so let's look at a little GIF here. Now, this is what I mean when I say the radius varies. It's like big small big small why does it do that well that's for you to go and google out that's not in the syllabus but as the radius change very big versus very small you notice the color changes that's related to the temperature the temperature is changing as well and not only the temperature changing the luminosity or the true brightness or power radiated also is changing so on earth i mean if you go really close you would see this right here but on Earth, we won't see all this thing. We'll just see a blinking star that changes over a few days. Sometimes it's very bright, sometimes it's very dark. Very bright and very dark. This is an example of what a CIFID variable is like. So if we were to, you know, be an astronomer in the old days, they have nothing to do at night, there's no electricity. All we do is just sit at night in the starry sky and watch the star. Okay, yesterday I was looking at this star. It looks a little brighter today. Let me make a note in my diary. And over time, you'll be able to plot out graphs like the one on the left side here. This is a brightness over time graph where you will see this kind of oscillating pattern. Where you at some point, you have peak brightness and some point it's just not as peak. So from here, we can get the period of the oscillating brightness or the varying luminosity. This is period T. Now, how does that get us luminosity? Because remember, the reason of standard candle is to get luminosity. So then comes this lady, old astronomer, <laughs> once upon a time, studied the skies for a very long time and came up with the period luminosity relationship, also known as Levitt's Law. Okay, so hats off to this lady who spent a lot of time in the olden days. I guess there's not many lady scientists. Uh, but this period luminosity relationship gives us the thing that we need. Because now, all we need to do is look at the sky. And if we see a period of maybe five days oscillation, and we identify that that twinkle, twinkle little star is really a type 1 Cepheid star, okay, then we will know that the luminosity is a certain value with respect to our sun. In this case, uh, in, this, uh, in this graph here, it's 10 to the power of 3 times of the sun. It's a little bit blurry, but there's L sun over there. Okay, so that's it. This graph will be given to us usually thanks to the work of scientists before. So let's summarize this first Cepheid variable, uh, which is uh, classified as a standard candle. Okay, so what do we know from these graphs and Cepheid variables? Okay, so first fact we can note down is all Cepheids, Cepheids, I don't know how to pronounce properly, all Cepheids of the same period, I mean, considering we are all in type 1 classical Cepheids, same period T, they will have the same luminosity. Have the same 
luminosity. So just go watch any star in the sky, measure the period, you know the luminosity. Which is very helpful because now we have a way of determining the luminosity pretty in a standardized way, la, pretty pretty well, pretty reliably. Okay, so what we can do with this information is we estimate the L luminosity. So L can be estimated from the period of variation of brightness. Yeah, like what we did in the graph just now. Okay, you find a period, maybe it's five days, you're gonna get a certain value of luminosity. Okay, and a re quick recap also to find distance from L, that's the whole point, right? To find distance to a certain star uh, with L, we use our radian flux equation. So on Earth, we are going to use a device like a camera to measure the radian flux intensity and that will be the luminosity over 4 pi d squared so this is from our previous video okay so this is measured this f here is measured with our device some instruments some sensors l here <coughs> is estimated from our period luminosity graph and this one, we can now calculate this. Yeah. So if you have a star in a distant galaxy far, far away and it's doing its twinkle, twinkle little star, we are very happy. We can now know the distance to that galaxy or to that star, whichever system it is in. Okay. So that's the main idea of surface variables. So other examples of standard candles we can look at, all right, just FYI, there'll be all kinds of luminosity. So just here, a nice table to look at, well, six brighter stars. Usually we give it in terms of solar lumin luminosity, which is in terms of our sun. So here are just some stars in the sky. Are they, are they blinking? Well, I don't know. Go Google and see. But what people will do is now with all the tools they have, they will go around, give the stars names, record the distance record the luminosity temperature hang on a bit we'll come to that in the later section okay so before we end this video we're going to try one quick example of how you can use a period luminosity chart to kind of estimate the distance to a star so here we have a type 1 cepheid variable star observed in the andromeda andromeda galaxy far far away and it has a period of 30 days so 30 days to get dark and bright again the observed radian flux intensity of the star is 5.4. That's our F, what we see. And the radian flux intensity of the sun at the Earth, oh, this is F sun. Average distance between the sun and Earth is D, sun. So use this information to, uh, to determine the distance to the Andromeda galaxy. Hmm. Okay, so let's, uh, Andromeda is one of our neighbors, lah, by the way. So let's say we look up in the sky and we see like this, um, this galaxy here. And within that galaxy, there is a type 1 cepheid star inside there that is twinkling. I mean, there's many stars, but one of them is twinkling and we're like, oh, identify as a cepheid. So we are currently like somewhere here in near the sun. Okay. So let's put our values together. We are perhaps a black dot somewhere in between. I don't know, man. I should do this. Okay, let's do this. We are here, this black dot. We got a few distances here, so we probably have to do a ratio. So the first distance is to the sun. We get some flux. Second distance is to this cepheid star. Man, how to draw a nice line here. Okay, this is D star. This is D sun. And they radiate a luminosity L. Sun also has a luminosity, but we don't really know what that is, do we? Hmm, never mind. This is L star. L sun. By the time the luminosity reaches us, we don't call it luminosity anymore. The brightness, we call it flux of the star that reaches us. And of course, 
flux of the sun that reaches us. Okay, first step. Let's look at the graph. Period of 30 days means... Oh, we got to do a very rough estimate, but it's a tight one. So probably about 10 to the 4 times the luminosity of the sun. So from this, we can come up with the first hint up here, actually, that the luminosity of the star is going to be 10 to the 4 times the luminosity of our sun. That gives us a nice ratio that we can use later. Okay. Uh, right. We, we hold the hint over there first, okay? We hold it there. Now let's look at our our ratio. So we have L sun, F, and L. Okay, so back to our usual. We, we know that F equals to L over 4 pi d squared, right? So we can rearrange this to some kind of relationship where F times d squared over L is a constant. Which means if I have f oh, let's do orange f d square and l for my sun that ratio would be the same as the f d square over l for the star the cepheid star in the andromeda galaxy now all i need to do is plug all my values into this ratio and i can get my distance okay so i'm going to rearrange a little bit so we can see how we can Best use the info. So first, let's write some rearrangings here. I think I'll just rearrange it so it's easier to see. Okay, so distance to star uh, over distance sun, the sun square. Okay, and that will be on one side of my equation. So equals to... I'm going to rearrange the F and L star to the other side. So this one can move there, move to the other side. So I would have L star on the top, L sun on the bottom. Okay, L is there. F sun would be on top. And F star would be on the bottom. Okay, I think I didn't miss out anything. Should be all of it. Here. Okay. What's up with my colors, man? Okay, now we can plug in everything. Oops, I just realized I labeled the F star wrongly. The orange color one should be F sun. There we go. All right, let's plug in values. So, the only thing that we need to use from the graph is the ratio of L star to L sun, which is given from the graph on top here. So let's plug that in as well. Okay, so distance to star. You look at the values up there already. Distance to star. We don't know. We need to find that. Okay, sure. Don't forget, this is d star square. Distance to star, 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. So we go 1.5 times 10 to the 11 square. Of course, you can rearrange with square root, but I'm, I don't know. No enough space already. So L star over L sun is found from our period luminosity graph here. So that will be 10 to the 4. F star F sun. Okay, we got to look at the values again. So based on those, we have... Where's F star? Uh, there we go. Radiant flux intensity of the star, 5.4 times 10, negative 16. For the sun, is 1.37 times 10 to the 3. Ooh, that's a very big difference. It's going to be, look very bright. This is 10 negative 16, so it's... Probably you can't really see it with your eyes. You've got to use a, a telescope or a camera to help you up, to help collect your photons. So F sun here, it will be uh, 1.37 times 10 to the 3. F star is very, very, very small. Very dim light. Negative 16. Look at that ratio. So when I rearrange and press calculator, I should get a distance to the star of about 2.4 times 10 to the 22 meters. Hmm. Long distance. Very nice. Sometimes in uh, astronomy, because the distance is so big, there's another unit called light years. So you may see, just in case you see it, you want to convert to light years. We need to divide this by 9.4. 4, 6 times 10 to the 15. 
So this one, let's write this out. Side note in orange, no, in red. So one light year, LY, is another way of measuring distance. 1.46 times 10 to the 15 meters. So I'm going to divide by 1.46 times 10 to the 15 meters and I get roughly about 1.6 times 10 to the 7 light years. So what this means is the light will take this many years, 1.6 times 7 years to reach my eyes traveling through the galaxy. Okay, so if you're wondering why is this light years like this, mm, let's write a little note here. If I have a source of light, let's say a photon, and it comes out and it travels, 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 I give it one year of time. The, I, the question is, how far can the light travel in one year? That's the def definition of one light year. <laughs> so if you want to calculate the distance of one light year, we go to go back to our classic speed, no speed, no speed, distance. Ah, remember our AS distance equals to velocity times time. So we say distance is the velocity times time. We assume that the light is not, this assumption is the light is not going to be accelerating. So our distance here of one light year is speed of light, 3 times 10 to the power of 8. And time in seconds, ooh, one year. So one year... Let's say it's 365 days. Each day got 24 hours. Each hour 60 minutes. Each minute 60 seconds. So this is year, days, hours, minute, and second. How far can we travel? So we should get the value of 9.46, which is our value just now. 9.46 times 10 to the 15 meters. This is the equivalent of one light year. Okay, so just in case they ask you to derive this, make sure you know what a light year is. If they ever ask you to deal with this unit. Okay, so I think that's all for today. How do we find distance from luminosity of a CFID variable? Next up, we'll be looking at uh, some examples as well as another standard candle called a supernova for very, very far away galaxies. Okay, so go take a look in the night sky. If you see a twinkle, twinkle little star, it may be a Cepheid variable, but of course, twinkle over a few days or a few weeks or a few months. Very bright, very dark. Okay, but that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one.